We're now going to derive a formula for the speed of wave on the string. Here's the pulse that we're going to be considering is traveling from the left to the right along the screen here. Now imagine yourself in the reference frame of the pulse. So you're traveling along at the top of the pulse here. You're this increment delta s. What you see is increments of the rope going past you. They'll be traveling to the left. Okay, now let's consider what's happening in this case. Delta s is a little arc length here. R is the radius of our semicircular hump. Theta is the angle between the middle of our arc length and the edge of our arc length. So the total angle in here is 2 theta. So from our equations for arc length, we know that the length delta s is equal to 2 r theta because the angle is 2 theta and the radius of our semicircle is r. Now we're going to have a think about all the forces acting on the system. We have tension pulling the string down in this direction. We have tension pulling the string down in that direction. Those are the two forces acting on it. And the result is that this undergoes circular motion. And so the resultant force is equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration. This makes the geometry a bit more clear. The tension is pulling on the end of this increment down here and on the end of this increment here. Because the radius makes an angle of 90 degrees with the circumference of the circle, this is 90 in here. So this angle in here is equal to theta. Okay, so that's just the same picture again. Now what we do is we move this tension here, this tension here, so that we're adding them head to tail. When we do that, we know that our resultant force is the mass times the centripetal acceleration. So looking at the geometry, this angle in here was theta, which tells us this angle here is theta. So half the length down here is T sine theta. So the length of this resultant force is 2T sine theta. So that's why we've got this 2T sine theta here. And here is our centripetal acceleration. Now we're going to make the small angle approximation. If theta is small, then sine theta is approximately theta. So we can replace this sine theta here with theta. That's what we've done here. Now what we need to do is work out this mass here. So the mass of a piece of string is equal to the density per unit length of the string times the length of the string. But we've already shown that the length delta s is equal to 2r theta because it was the arc of that circle. So we can say that the mass of the piece of string is the linear density times 2r theta. So now we're just going to substitute that in. Here's our resultant force, 2t theta, and here's the m v squared on r term, and m has been replaced with this expression here. Now there's lots of things we can cancel out. We can cancel out our thetas, we can cancel out the 2s, we can cancel out the r's, and when we do that, we're left with the expression t is equal to mu, the mass per unit length, times the velocity squared. So we can rearrange that to write that the velocity is equal to the square root of the tension over the mass per unit length. Now, we assumed that this was a semicircular pulse. It actually turns out that the shape doesn't matter. Any shape can be approximated as a semicircle at the very top. So actually, the pulse shape or the wave shape is unimportant. This equation holds for any wave shape. Now, we also assume that the tension T along the string was constant so that this pulse traveling along the string was not affecting the tension. That's only true if the pulse is fairly small. If the pulse is very large, then it's going to cause the string to stretch, and that's going to add some extra tension. We'll see later that this equation can actually be generalized. We'll be seeing it for sound waves. But we can actually generalize it to the velocity is equal to some elastic property, in this case the tension, over some inertial property, in this case the mass per unit length. For a sound wave, it ends up being the bulk modulus, given the symbol B, over the density of the per unit volume of the material that the wave is traveling through.